first thing you want to do is you want to, uh, again, still using a straight edge, but probably for one of the last times in this class. So you want to take this straight edge, and you want to, we're going to, we're going to construct a line at the top of the paper, and we want to give it a slight angle, not too much of an angle, just a slight angle. want to strike a line from the left going to the right, so it travels in this direction. And this will be line number one. Once you have line number one constructed, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take your straight edge and you're going to let it drop more on the left hand side than the right side, so it sort of fans open a little bit. And you're going to create another line at the bottom of the page. Starting from the left to the right, traveling in that direction. This will be line number two. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your straight edge of 30, 60 degree triangle of 45 or whatever you have. And you're going to line up, line up the bottom edge of the triangle, either with the bottom of the paper or the top of the paper. You want to line it up with the edge, and you're going to strike a vertical line down the, um, connecting both of the top and the bottom horizontal lines. Right about there. That's line three. Okay, and from this point, I'm going to my straight edge on the bottom line and I'm going to flip my straight edge over and basically try to duplicate the opposite of that angle going to the other direction and then I'm going to actually not draw that I'm going to give it a little bit of a rotation so that I lift the triangle on the left side it's going up a little bit you see that so I'm here I'm going to put a little bit of angle there and I'm going to strike a line left again to the right. This will be line number four. And from here, I'm going to uh, create another vertical line. Again, it's very helpful if you take your triangles uh, six meets line number one at this point here. So what you need to do is take your straight edge, place one of the, the uh, take your triangle, place one of the edges on the edge of the paper, and 
once you got it lined up, create a horizontal line, cross like so. And then you'll also want to create a vertical line. line number seven. So we have vertical line number six, vertical line number seven, and then horizontal line number eight. Now we'll, we'll go through this again. Right here where line number three starts, this point here, and where line number seven and eight meet, this point here, we're going to use the That states that two points determine a line. So we're going to connect these two points together and we'll get a straight line. And what you want to do is you want to extend that line through the points.
converging lines going off to the left and two converging lines going off to the right. And this is the beginning of the creation of your, your grid. So let's go back to the other sheet. eyeballing the bottom and very accurately, or as accurate as it can possibly be, I'm making a mark on the paper. So now I have, I have, two, I have two points that actually uh, measure the line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this corner and I'm going to fold it down towards that little pen mark that I made at the bottom. And I want to be as accurate as possible when doing that. Put a crease. I'll open up the paper and the crease will represent the center of that line. Put a small mark there. And I'm going to put an L on this side just to let myself know that this is for the left hand vertical line. Okay. So I've let the paper unfold and I've lined it up again. Now I'm going to fold the top corner of the paper towards the crease that I've just created. And I'm going to create 
ready to make your pivot. Unfold it. And I've just found the center between these two points. I can take those two creased edges that I, those creased areas or creased points that I've created. I can slide the paper down. Locate another point. So one, two, and three points. Does everybody understand what I'm doing here? So I'll take this paper again and I'll rotate it to another straight, clean side. Move over to the line on the right, the vertical line on the right. I'll carefully align this corner with this point. down to that pen mark until they touch. I'll crease the paper, let the paper unfold. Make sure that everything is lined up right. And then place a mark where I crease the paper on the vertical line. Again, I will take the paper and I will curl it in towards that crease. ignoring the vertical line on the right until I get all these converging lines drawn from the left convergence. And then I'll <coughs> do the same thing for the vertical line on the right. I'll take these two points and connect them. If you want them to to extend all the way across the paper and get it. These two points. These points here. And what you can do center line, vertical line, and extend it down a little bit further. And then take your take your paper that you use to actually make your measurements. Find the one that has the C on it for center, for your center vertical line. And take the creased edges, or the creased uh, points on that edge. Slide them down like so, and place another point on that vertical that you just extended. And you can do the same thing for the line on the
same to the top. You can fill this entire sheet up with, uh, with uh, converging lines. So this is the Brewer grid. Uh, this is what a lot of your work is going to be based on or sketched over. And uh, if, we don't, if we don't create this or if we don't set this up correctly, uh, all of your work will end up uh, having some discrepancies in perspective. So if this doesn't if this doesn't come out perfectly the first time you create it, uh, you'll have to go back and recreate it again. We're going to do this about I don't know four or five times in class until you get it right, or until you get a good one, or two two good ones, or three good. They may be slightly different depending on the angle that you start out with. Uh, some will have more perspective, some will have a little less. So uh, it's good to have a variation depending on you know, what effect or how, how, uh, how the depiction of perspective uh, your drawings have. If they don't have a very strong perspective uh, 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 depiction, then maybe some of your stronger Brewer grids would help you get some of that. Okay, so we're going to spend time in class doing this. We'll walk around and help you make sure you're doing it correctly. Um, so what I would suggest you do is you go ahead and pull out a clean sheet of paper these. Um, you should have gotten handouts. We have print some handouts. Everybody get a handout for constructing this grid? Good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're, we're basically going to let you turn to and go ahead and start constructing these grids. And we'll help you out. Okay? Uh, I'm sorry, question? Uh, is, is there like a on this one or can you use all of them? Uh, no, not on this one. 